Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the RFT show. I'm so excited for this episode. We are quickly going to discuss a couple of financial things in the, the rugby universe. I'm joined by Daniel today, and we are just going to jump into this right now. So the latest news in a, in a financial sense regarding rugby is, of course, Bowden Barrett moving to Japan. Daniel, what do you think about that? He hasn't even played a season for the Blues yet. So uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, and I'm just reading here. It says he signed a four-year deal with Rugby New Zealand and the Blues last year. And as you mentioned, he took a sabbatical. And we, I think we did long ago, we did a, a, a video about it. We actually just played two years um, because he had took a sabbatical and he missed the thing. I don't know. I can't remember because of what. I think it was because of injury as well. So he yeah, would have only played like two years out of the four years they had him. And now he's just going to even see that through. So it's interesting how times have quickly changed in the New Zealand camp. Yes. And yeah, you know, so it, it, I just think it's been quite interesting that he suddenly left. And he, they say it's because of financial strain, but I think it's because of the money. That's, that's maybe the case. So uh, just, just to, to add on that, the reports and all the articles say it's about the financial constraints that New Zealand are facing right now because of the lack of funds that are getting, you know, getting into to the sport in, in uh, New Zealand. But on your side, so you think it is a personal matter for him because of money. Uh, of course, he's getting an increase. Yeah, and I think he's the highest paid rugby player now in the world. Uh, earning this this article says per season one point five million dollars. I don't know if that's American or what 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 dollar, but it just says one point five per season. Imagine signing a two year deal that's three million dollars. So African, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is quite a lot. But definitely one of the highest paid. If it isn't the highest paid, he's definitely going to be one of the highest. Mm. Uh, and. Uh, just for everyone who's listening, just just become a back-to-back IRB rugby player of the year, and you can earn that as well. <laughs> so Japan Japan team is gonna come knock on your door if you are a back-to-back IRB player of the year. But then in other news as well is uh, the King Carlos. Oh, what a player in his heyday! King Carlos left the Hurricanes, uh, parted ways with them. Also, the last couple of uh, a week or two back. Uh, what do you think about that? It's obviously sad when a coach has to leave because of financial constraints. And if, even if it's just a dispute between the club, it's always sad because it has a negative influence on the team and on the dynamic. And I think he's, he still has a good, good head on his shoulders, a good, um, what do you call it, assistant coach he can be. So mm. it's obviously sad because he, he, I would want him to be advisor. And if it's not an official role, just someone like just working with your fly-off, just five minutes a day. Imagine what he can teach your fly-off. Just about the vision. Yes, I completely agree. I mean, Carlos was one of one of the best and well-performing players in back in the day. Uh, I can remember a couple of his tries was just phenomenal. And then his kicking style was um, revolutionary at that stage in, in rugby. But I think... It is, it is sad because of financial constraints. And I think as well, just speculating, I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but the last three or four weeks that we have been watching uh, the New Zealand Otaroa competition, the first week they were jam-packed. I mean, they, they showed the crowds and it was just amazing how many people showed up. But even the last week we, we saw the game, the crowds have been dropping off a bit. Do you think it was just because everyone was so excited there will be sport on and they wanted to, to go out for an outing? Or do you think they were actually, you know, rugby supporters? Or, and are we going to see that more in the future with this, this uh, competition continuing? Do you think we will see a decline of crowds once again? So firstly, the market strategy was, was very well done. Uh, hyping up rugby Arita, or the first super rugby pack, the first rugby teams to be playing again, and so on and so on mm-hmm. and so on. So well done to them. But um, the Hurricanes and the Chiefs losing a couple of games definitely made, made a massive drawback because uh, they, they were two of the biggest teams in New Zealand rugby. So them losing obviously has an influence on spectators. And now you're losing Bowden Barrett and Dan Cotta hasn't yet appeared. So no big names. Of course, mm. the biggest names are leaving or not featuring. 
because this is the first time this weekend that we saw Jordy Barrett for the first time play. So, you know, big names or New Zealand names getting benched, getting subbed, uh, you know, you lose that, you lose that, that, that star capacity that just attracts a crowd. Yes, I think, I think that, is, that is true in a sense. Uh, for me, just personally, I think some and most people that, that uh, did go and view the first game in, in the Super Rugby Aotearoa, they just wanted to get out. Uh, that's not that they hate rugby or anything, but I don't think they die our supporters of rugby. And that's why we've been seeing a decline in, in that. But the one thing that I just quickly wanted to mention with, with Bowden, uh, that we what we spoke about just uh, a few minutes earlier, is that in pounds it is uh, seven hundred and eighty thousand pounds per season. Or well, that's what I have here in front of me. So he's he's he would probably rank third or fourth because I know and and we spoke about this off air as well. Charles Pietau and uh, Andre Pollard is roughly a million million pounds uh, per season. So that's quite a bang for buck, if you, if you ask me. Uh, and that's also an increase from his Blues contract, if I'm not mistaken. I think you have the figures mm. in, in front of you. Yeah, I think I had it yeah, somewhere. I think I lost it now uh, in between all. Um, okay, so no, that was the Japan deal. Yes, I'll, I'll find it quickly now. But I want to mention something because... If 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 someone like Burton Barrett can be stolen away by Sun Suntory Sun Goliath, imagine the impact that England can have on someone like Oscar Sututu and mm. uh, the level that he can still play international and pounds being better. And if if this is true that New Zealanders are still continuing to follow money, and that'll get to my question of the day later, because it it's all clumped into one. Um, do you think that that'll make an impact on him? So I want to counter your question while I'm searching for the stats here. <laughs> so no, that's that's no problem. We we go as we make up the rules as we go. Anyway, um, <laughs> Oscar Institute, I have so much faith in this guy. I mean, I, I'm so excited. That's everyone who's been listening and has been supporting us through the whole since uh, since we've been watching Super Rugby Aotearoa. And I just want to thank you, everyone who's listening to this episode. No, I am a Blues supporter. I've always supported the Blues in a New Zealand conference, and I've been uh, since since I can remember. Uh, I've been backing them because they were the underdogs, and now they've they've actually stepped up and competing. Hopefully, we won't get get completely thumped by the Crusaders, the Almighty Crusaders. But when that when that game game will happen, uh, I'm still gonna like scream my lungs out for for the Blues. But anyway, that's not the case. Oscar Institute is a young and up and coming star for whichever team, team, international team he decides to play for. So we all know he's, of course, in New Zealand at the moment and has eligibility for New Zealand, for England because of his parents, if I'm not mistaken, and as well for Fiji, which if he chooses Fiji, I think that will, that will shock the rugby world. But this guy. He's playing so well in his unit right now with the Blues. Honestly, if he decides to go to, to uh, England, that would be a shock personally, just a personal point of view. That would be a shock for me. But if, if it's because of money, I think there is definitely clubs with deeper pockets than the Blues. That's, that's, that's not even a question. There is clubs with deeper pockets that can pay him also 500, 600,000 pounds per season. And that will definitely be an increase because he was a bench, he was a bench um, player for the last couple of seasons. Well, a season or so because Akire was, was the number one. And Akire has been featuring in the six, you know, in the flank position very well. I'm actually very excited to see those three maybe stepping up in, in New Zealand colors. But again, that's Oscar's. That's his, um, what do you call it? You will have to choose. So I, I yes. don't even know how to, to answer that question. If he goes to England, that will be a big loss for the Kiwis. I think he is he is the most exciting thing since sliced bread. No, I'm just kidding. Since <laughs> long, long. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, but yes, no, he's, a, he's a very exciting player. And if he goes to play in, in Europe somewhere or so on, 
I would lean more to he, he wants to play then for England. If he chooses a, a club in, in Europe to go play for them, you know, club rugby, he will probably uh, go to, to England. Yeah, so I totally agree with that, that he, uh, if he moves for money, he'll move to England and play for them as well. Because I'll, I'll, I'll just mention the, the quick numbers and then I'll, I'll, I'll finish that sentence. So just, just bear with me. Because Baron Barrett received 1 million um, New Zealand dollars and he's number 14 on the list that I have in front of me. And he's the highest player that plays in New Zealand getting paid, obviously. And then mm-hmm. at number nine, Michael Hooper, with the only Australian on the list, receives Australian dollars, 1.1 million. But interesting enough that Stephen Watsuo, who plays in England, uh, earns uh, 1.3 New Zealand or million New Zealand dollars. So, and he's not even like the best that they had, and he didn't play New Zealand that long. So that just mm-hmm. shows you, and that, that's why I want to mention our constitute to and the eligibility for England, because Stephen Watsuo plays in England. He plays for Bristol Bears. So. If someone like Oscar Institute plays his cards right, he can go to England, maybe feature an Eddie Jones side in the in the 2023 World Cup um, with some big names, the Curry or the, the Kamikaze kids. I'm almost at the, at the Curry kids. Well, maybe Curry's twin brother will play with him. We don't know. So they have an interesting lineup, an interesting squad, an interesting young squad, and he can fit right into that. And he can make a lot of money doing that. Because he's, I think he's worth a lot, and if he plays internationally, he's even worth more. So, because Aaron Farrell earns seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. So my mm. question of the day, and I'm I'm not going to give you a chance to ask it, ask me, but <laughs> do you think um, that Australia and New Zealand is going through what South Africa went through, losing players finally? But the second compound part of my question is that, do you think New Zealand will slack their rule of not picking someone playing? inside New Zealand. So if Oscar is to do the plays for England and New Zealand selects him first, will he take that offer? Because he's not playing in New Zealand and I know they, they don't like that policy of playing outside New Zealand and they're making an exception for Bowden. So will the same be seen for younger players coming out of New Zealand if they move for cash? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, first of all, I think Again, if he moves, he will move for money. And I agree with you with if he if he is going to play for, for England, they are youngsters playing very well. I mean, this is a young team that went against the, the, the Springboks last year in the Rugby World Cup. Um, you know, the average were, were younger than the, the South African average. We had a bit older, older chains playing in, in uh, the last, hopefully their last World Cup. We won't see Tom Stein and... and and but it's right. but anyway, and and when, <laughs> um, but yes, just to get back to the point, if he he decides to play for New Zealand, so let's just switch that up. You said he can go play for the. Uh, he will then play with the Kamikaze kids, and uh, I don't know who's who's the who was the number eight last year for them. I can't. I don't know. Vinny Pola. Vinny Pola. Oh damn! I need yeah. to know his name. Of course, he was in the news a couple of weeks ago. Um. Mm, I have mixed feelings about him. He's probably one one of the best in air quotations in 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 rugby today. But again, Satutu, I would back Satutu. That's that's a personal opinion. Again, we I don't want to debate all every opinion I have about rugby, but I definitely would back him because of his youth and his immaculate form at the moment and the way that he plays. But then again. Let's say he does choose for New Zealand. He wants to play for New Zealand. He would, he would probably play with players like Lachlan Boshier if he gets selected. If that, that I think is possible. He would probably play with Ari Savia, Sam Kane. Not too old, but also not the youngest guy on the block. Yeah, Lachlan, I know, he's a bit younger and a, a great player at the moment. But I mean, Sam Kane, Ari Savia, they're a bit older gents. And they could they could really slot him in very well. Can you imagine an Ari Savia, Sam Kane, or Skinsitutu at the back? I can I can imagine that very well. Um, so that's, that's, again, a decision he needs to make. I, I, I'm actually not sure. I, 
it's going to be our news will reveal itself. That's actually all. Now the time will reveal itself. We will know if he, if he wants to play for New Zealand or England. But I can definitely tell you something. He will play for a national side before the year end if we have international rugby. That I can tell you because he's already on everybody's radar. Mm. No, that's for sure. And um, I think on that note, we must uh, leave this. Uh, this question is still fresh in, in the listeners' mind and mm. um, the fans' mind. So I think, guys, just hit us up on any platform. Um, be f- feel free to share your opinion, uh, money, cash, or loyalty to nations. What do you think is going to happen? Obviously, we just mentioned a couple of names that, that is highlighting now. We can go into this deeper if you guys want, but that depends if what the comments say and what you guys think. So I think that's all from my side, but I'll leave the last word to the boss. That's perfect. Thanks so much, Daniel, for your time. For everyone who's listening and have been listening to our episodes, we really, we are grateful for all of you. We thank you from the, from the deepest part of our hearts. We just want to thank you and we want to create an, an awesome space for rugby, rugby lovers, actually, and passionate rugby fans to speak about rugby. So that is what we are trying to do. Please hit, up, hit us up on all social media platforms, as Daniel said. And until next time, hashtag RFD family.